Hey everyone, how's it going? This is episode 6 of the Make a Map series where I create a map based on your ideas. For this video, we're going to be going over the development of the fourth and final point of our Japanese payload map. The top Reddit post for the final point mentioned high ground for both red and blue, which played perfectly into our existing idea of the map ending in a castle. For inspiration, we hit up Google and found this image that we really liked, and decided that blue would push through a courtyard area that ended at the top of a hill. Looking at our image, we decided the best way to accomplish this would be have the path follow a U-shape, and at the end of the path, at the top of the hill, there would be a large door that leads into the castle. This looked pretty good to us, but then we realized that this layout created a massive sight line leading back to sea, so we added in a couple of trees and fences to compensate. As for the side routes, we wanted to be sure that our right flank from sea connected to the courtyard, so we extended it down and added health and ammo. By following the track up the hill and to the right, you'll enter a room that's reminiscent of the right route on upward last. There's an upper level, which leads out to a balcony that overlooks the point, and a door on the lower level that spits the player out right on top of the point. On the left side of the courtyard, there's a narrow uphill route that cuts into the side of the final point, and on this route there's also some health and ammo placed precariously near the edge. As for the point itself, it's fairly flat and open. Above there's a balcony that's accessible from Blue's right route, and a balcony that's only accessible from Red Spawn. Red Spawn has three exits, two down low, and one up top. The final thing we added was a forward spawn for Blue in the building near 3rd. This first iteration took about 6 hours and I was pretty tired by the time we finished, but we did manage to get in a couple of playtests, and I was surprised to see that Blue actually ended up winning all the rounds that we played. And it wasn't so much that I was surprised that they would capped the final point, but in previous playtests, Red was usually able to get a few stops at the points prior, so I was surprised that Blue was able to make it past all of these. The biggest issue we ran into in the playtest was this crazy sightline from last to sea, and we kind of saw this coming and tried to prevent it by adding the trees and fences, but it didn't really do a good enough job of cutting off the sightline. So our answer, of course, was to add even more trees. We added one near the gate and then one further back near sea. Another problem that we noticed was Blue didn't really have a forward base. If you look at other payload maps, there's usually a decent place between the spawn and the last point for Blue to hold, so they aren't pushed all the way back but our map didn't have this. We had intended this right route to provide that, but it didn't really work. Red was able to push through here super easily, so to fix this, we raised this area so Red could only access it by blast jumping, and then we slapped a roof on the top so Red couldn't bomb Blue as they were holding the corner. After we made these changes, we started up another playtest, and I was disappointed with the result. Something fell off, it just was not fun, and we decided to end up scrapping the whole thing. So we started over, and we said this time we're gonna make it better. And we weren't sure how to get there, so we just started throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what stuck. We kept the U-shape of the track, but instead of going around a courtyard, we slapped a building in the middle to cut off that sightline. As Blue pushed around this corner, Red would be able to hold the inside of the building, and then we made the roof accessible to stick with the convention that we established earlier in the map on the first point. On the other side of the building, there's a route down low that goes underneath, and allows Blue to sneak up on Red from the side. We thought this might be a good route to take if Red was holding up top. For the right flank from C, we kept it pretty much the same, but we did add this balcony on the outside that would give Blue a better spot to attack if Red was holding up top on the roof. Looking at the main route, you'll notice a drop down here. This actually acts as a shortcut for Red to get to third from their last spawn. So once Blue captures C, this actually shuts off and Red is forced to go all the way around the building. A little bit further forward, there's a lower route for Blue that leads to the final point, and there's a lot of different things I need to talk about with this route, so I'm going to come back to this once I've covered a little bit more of the map. So back to the cart path, once Blue pushes past this building, they head around this corner into a smaller choky area. The cart path then leads through this big door straight into the final point. To the right of this route, there's a room that's accessible by both Red and Blue. For Blue, they must push up these stairs outside, and then for Red, it's basically right outside their spawn. Red spawn sits back in this corner and has three exits. One is up top and connects to this balcony, which leads straight into that room we just looked at, and then the other two exits are down low and lead out right to the point. Now let's circle back and look at that lower route that we looked at earlier. This route connects to the entire left side of the final point. By pushing through here, Red is able to access the point from the side, a room up top that overlooks the point, and also they can meet back up with the cart path. It took about another six hours to complete all of this, so we went straight into a playtest to see if the hard work had paid off. And it felt pretty good, it was a lot better than the last point. The biggest problem we found is there wasn't really a tactical way for Blue to push into the last point. They just kind of had to pop Uber and walk through the main door, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, you'll see that on other payload maps, but we did want Blue to feel like they had more options. 
One issue in particular was the right route. Since it was so easy for red to access this straight from their spawn, it was basically impossible for blue to use. So to fix this, we removed that door for red and then made the room a little bit smaller. As I've mentioned before, maps usually start out favoring blue, but as players learn the layout, red gets better. This was also true for the last point. After a few rounds, red started finding better spots to hold and build sentries, and there was one sentry spot in particular up here on this balcony that was really difficult to deal with. So that was the first thing we changed with the next version. We added a staircase at the back of the point that would allow blue to access that area. Another change we made was enclosing this part of the upper area outside of red's spawn. It can be really tough getting spammed coming out of spawn, so this acts as a small buffer between spawn and the point. We then playtested these changes and it felt pretty good, obviously not a huge difference compared to the last version. We went back to the drawing board to see what else we could do to shake it up. One concern many people voiced was how difficult it was to access this left flank for blue from the cart path. There were two ways to get to the left route. The first required the player to pass in front of this main door, meaning they had to expose themselves to snipers, sentries, or whatever else was there. And then the second option was to loop all the way back around this building and use the lower route. Both options weren't very good, so we decided to do something about that. After some discussion on Discord, we decided to open up this middle building, giving Blue a way to rotate between the routes more quickly. It also helped give this building purpose, which it didn't have before. The next change we made was extending the roof on this building. Soldiers had a huge advantage up here, and we wanted to provide a little bit of cover to any players who were pushing the cart down below. To help with that even further, we added some crates off to the side that would allow all classes to access the roof. We then added a little cubby over here that had some health and ammo. So at this point, we were feeling pretty good. We thought we might be getting close to something we'd consider good enough. So for this playtest, I invited Uncle Dane to join and see what he had to say. We ended up playing four rounds, and we noticed that Blue would always have a lot of time to cap the last point, like eight or nine minutes. And even though they had plenty of time, they only ended up capping once. So we felt that maybe the changes we'd made hadn't been enough in Blue's favor. Dane gave some really great feedback on the map overall, and a lot of it focused on the last point. The first thing he did was point out this roof on the flank near third. He thought this might make an interesting spot to put a teleporter for both red and blue. We decided to go one step further and actually open up this building completely. We added a small health and ammo here and a drop down in the next room over. The idea behind this was to give blue a better place to set up as they push last. Next, we completely redid the right route near last to provide more space. As Dane mentioned, this area is really risky for blue to push as red only had to watch this small door and they had a hide advantage. Even if blue did manage to make it through, the balcony at the top didn't provide many advantages. We took some inspiration from Barn Blitz and split this room into two, one up top and one down low. The lower room would provide Blue with a spot to regroup, and it would also be easier to push from the main route since they no longer would be at a height disadvantage. The room up top would still be pretty easy for Red to hold, but they would need to turn their backs to the cart path to watch the entrance. We then moved over to the left side of last. Dane compared this area to the upper route on upward, but said there wasn't quite enough space for Blue to really do anything. We decided to fix this problem by opening up this area completely and giving Blue some more space to move around. Dane also suggested removing this door down low entirely as it made it too easy for Red to push through and prevented Blue from getting access to this room. Removing the door would force Red to push through the main entrance to get access to this area or jump through one of the windows overlooking last. This area still felt a little empty to us, so we decided to extend this high ground instead of making it all a ramp, and this provided a little bit of height difference that would really make a big impact in this area. We playtested it, and overall it felt a lot better than the previous version. The right flank was way better for blue players, and so was the left flank. However, these changes did create some problems for red, the biggest being how difficult it was to access this side route. Although that was completely the point of removing that door, it felt like too much. So the first thing we did was bring that door back, but we knew we'd have to make some additional changes to make this area work. Since we were taking so much inspiration from Upward for this route, we decided to see why the route on Upward worked, and ours didn't. If you look at Upward, you'll see the routes are actually pretty similar. Upward also has a door close to the last point that Red can use to access this area, and it's opposite of Red's spawn, just like ours. Blue has access to this room by using a door right next to the main choke, another similarity. And then Blue can get access to this area by using a lower route, which puts them at a disadvantage, but it's also far enough away from the action that it's not a huge downside. All of this lined up with our map, so what made Upward play so much better? If you've played Upward, you'll probably realize that there's one route we overlooked, right here. This route is easily accessible by Blue, but Red has to walk all the way through this route and up the stairs to defend it. This gives Blue an easy way to take the high ground near last. So what did we do? We stole it. First thing we did is we added another level in this room, essentially creating another room above. And then we added an extra room over here that would connect to the outside. The idea was that players would be able to run across this wall to access this room and the upper route while avoiding being seen by Red. 
We also decided to add one more checkpoint right below the roof of this building. Prior to adding this point to the map, the last two points were really far apart, the furthest of any two points on the entire map. We then added a forward spawn for blue right before our new point, which would open up once it was capped. These were all really big changes, so we needed to get into playtest. Turns out, making three changes in favor of blue completely destroyed any chance Red had of winning. We knew right away the forward spawn we'd given blue was too powerful, so the first thing we did was remove it. The new route we'd added on the left side was working really well for the last point, but for the fourth point, it was really spreading the team out. To fix this, we decided to add these shutters over the entrances that would only open once the fourth point was captured. After we made these changes, we invited Jaybird to come play and give his thoughts, and he provided a lot of feedback, the majority of which was positive, which made me feel like we were moving in the right direction. We made a few more changes, such as adding a wall in front of Red's final spawn, adding a window to this upper room, and opening up a building near 4th to make it easier to access this roof. I'm still sorting through some of the feedback from Jaybird, so there may be some other changes on the way, but at this point, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. So there you have it, the entire map is now complete, and we're ready to actually make it look like a map. So for this part of the process, it's pretty difficult to collaborate with the community as we're really trying to make the map have a cohesive look. With that being said, if you have any suggestions, please post them in the Discord, which I've posted in the description below. The subreddit has kind of died off due to me falling behind with these videos, so the Discord is the main hub for discussion. The big question we have now is what time of the day do we want our map to take place in? Day or night? Morning or evening? So to determine this, I've opened up a poll on Twitter that will last about one week. Be sure you check it out if you want to voice your opinion. We've hit a big milestone in finally having the layout finished, so let's keep the momentum going and move forward with the detailing process. Be sure to follow on Twitch if you want to be notified when I go live. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you there.